Why, hello there. So in my last video, I ended up talking about like what I wanted to explore with home automation and how I can use it to help reduce some of the conceptualizing and planning needed for my wife and I to share tasks that we do around the house. And uh, I still haven't figured that out yet, but that's okay. While I was exploring my options, I stumbled into some interesting home automations that I find pretty useful. And uh, to be fair, they are pretty basic though, so um, take it with a grain of salt. But that's what I want to share with you. I feel that the more I tinker and experiment with automations, the more I'm likely to find the right combination of tech and software to not only solve my grocery dilemma, but also get a step closer to creating Kevin. Knows everything, very intelligent. Oh, So anyways, I just want to share five automations that I personally found useful. So for those of you in the home automation space, this automation is pretty basic as it simply shuts down the house for the night. Something else that I needed this automation to do for me was to tell me the events happening for the next day. I tend to forget schedules and appointments that I schedule for myself or appointments that my wife tells me about. Um, so I needed this, this to do a little bit more than to just shut down the house. I needed this automation to tell me my events. When I tap the NFC that is on my nightstand, Home Assistant will check Google calendars for any events happening in the next 16 hours. I have a node that will convert the events into sentences. For example, if I have at least one or more events, it will create a string that says, You have the following events coming tomorrow. Uh, and then, of course, list it out. If I don't have any events, it'll say something like, You have no appointments coming up. So this generated string is sent to the text-to-speech node, which I can then tell Home Assistant to play the speech on the Google display in my master bedroom. It also turns off all the lights while the message is playing, and then it waits about two minutes before starting to play some chill lo-fi beats. The text-to-speech seems to be an asynchronous process, so without this delay, uh, Google would start to read my events and then abruptly stop to play music. If any of you know any other way of handling this weird dilemma where I have to put this delay, uh, let me know in the comments, as I feel the delay is a bit hacky. Okay, so this next one is just waking up the baby, and it's pretty simple. Instead of being triggered by an NFC, this automation activates at 7.30 every morning. After this alarm triggers, it then basically checks to see if the automation is enabled. And if it is enabled, then we basically look at the times, like it's kind of dependent on times. So if this is triggered and it's during the morning time, then it triggers like the wake up routine, which is what I'm going to go into. Otherwise, it kind of triggers a nap routine. So here in, in the actual wake up routine, it first goes and it turns off the sound machine. Next, it goes into the randomization node. This is where we basically choose a number between zero and three. And then based off of that, it basically chooses uh, one of these operations where based off of that number, we choose like a color and a different playlist. So once we have the variable set for the color of the light and the playlist, we turn on the light using the colors that we previously saved. And then we start the playlist based off of the playlist that we saved earlier within the previous node. Okay, so this one I haven't tested out all the way yet, um, but what this automation is supposed to do is to start the robot vacuum whenever Home Assistant sees that both myself and my wife are out of the house. Since the property is surrounded by pine trees, we constantly track leaves, debris, seeds, and so on into the house every time we leave and come and go. And this causes us to have to sweep constantly. So having the robot to clean up after us when we leave would be very helpful. Again, if any of you know how to simulate this or if you got something similar working, let me know in the comments below. I would love to check it out and kind of figure out how to do this for myself. So since I couldn't really get it to work using the presence, uh, I decided to just use smart switches. So in this case, we're using the car smart button and we have it set so that when you double press it, then we will first check the state of the vacuum. And if we see that the vacuum state is docked, meaning that it's not doing anything, we then go and we tell it to start cleaning. And we tell it to clean the main area because then that's where we kind of have a lot of the mess. Um, and this switch is located right by the door, so we can literally 
double press it on our way out and it will just turn on and just start cleaning away. I, I kind of mentioned this one in my previous video uh, and I think I should go into a little bit more depth here in this video as to what I did and how things kind of worked out. And technically I actually got it working, which is why I know it won't work the way that I want it to for my family. Um, but I still worth, I still think it's worth mentioning for you guys. Okay, so my plan was to add NFCs to each of the reusable containers in a pantry. So when I scan the NFC, the food item would automatically add itself to our shopping list. Simple, right? No. Without Home Assistant, this task was close to impossible. On an iPhone, to set up automations, I would have to use a shortcuts app to register the NFC and tell it when it sees tags with XXX ID or whatever ID, um, add, let's say, Cheerios to my Costco shopping list. And sure, this would work, but it doesn't scale well at all. Let's say, for instance, I want to track Cheerios, Pop-Tarts, oats, sugar, and flour. On my iPhone, I would scan the NFC, then tell my phone when you see the NFC with this ID, add Cheerios to the Costco shopping list. Then I would repeat the process for Pop-Tarts, instead saying add it to, let's say, a different shopping list. And then the process would repeat for oats, sugar, flour, etc. Then I would have to do it all again for my wife's phone. And she has an Android, so I can't share shortcuts with her. Essentially, I would have to create two automations per every NFC tag. I don't really want to do this more than once. So to simplify this process, I decided to write a custom API server and use Todoist API to programmatically add items to our different shopping list. And by the way, Todoist is our to-do app that we use within our family. Um, you can see a link for it in the description. So once the server is set up, uh, then I would rewrite the NFC tag to have the URL, which used query params to trigger the API. For example, the NFC would hold the following website data, uh, HTTP colon forward slash forward slash 10.0.0.100 uh, colon 3000 forward slash add, and then the query param, right? Shopping list ID is equal to some ID, ampersand item is equal to, and then some item like, for instance, Cheerios. If any device connected to our Wi-Fi were to activate the NFC, it would ask to open a URL to the web browser, which would then trigger the API to add the item to the shopping list. Now I only need to program the NFC with the URL and anyone can add items to the grocery list. And technically I know from a security standpoint, uh, this sucks, but I don't care. So this solution works, but I felt it could be easier. Uh, right now, this solution requires two separate systems to work, the app to rewrite the NFC tags and my custom API code. And ideally, I would like to have everything handled by a single system. And I also want this to be easy enough that my wife could register new items herself. I'm not going to have her learn how to do, you know, query params or anything technical. But this is where Home Assistant comes into play. When I ran across Home Assistant, I finally landed on a final version of this automation that checked all the boxes for me. I can set it up once, it works across all devices, and it's easy to add new items, at least after the initial setup. First, I have a node that accepts all tags. So no matter what gets scanned, this automation will run. The next node will read the name of the tag and determine the store and the item. All grocery tags follow this pattern, store colon item. So for instance, Costco colon Cheerios. This node will parse the name tag and create a payload that has the name of the store and the grocery item. So for example, if I have a tag named Costco colon hot dog, it will create an object with store equal Costco's and item equal to hot dog. And by the way, naming the tag is outrageously simple within Home Assistant. Simply go to settings, tags, add tag, and then write the name of the tag. This is something that my wife could do. The following node is a validator node. If the created object is invalid, the automation stops. So for instance, if we create a tag name that is invalid, then this automation won't run for it. Or if any other tag is scanned and this automation runs, then technically it won't go any further. The next node creates a payload object that conforms to Todoist's API. The API for Todoist needs the ID of the project. This means that for this object, 
This node will search for a project with the name Costco and add the ID to the payload, resulting in an object that looks like this. Notice the project ID equals to some random ID. The next node uses the project ID found from the previous node to find all the items within that list. The goal of this node is to prevent duplicates from being added to the list. The next node verifies if the payload is still valid and if it passes, it's then added to the grocery list. With this system, there's no need to create multiple automations, no need to manage separate systems, and it works across all devices. Even though I got this working, I still had to abandon this plan because my wife's phone case blocks her NFC. Boo. So I have this issue where I will forget to charge the car and then I would have to rush out in the morning forgetting that I needed to charge the car and then being devastated that I have to make an unexpected pit stop to like the supercharger station. So I created this automation to prevent those situations from happening again. And I thought it was pretty cool with this one, but um, turns out that other folks have done it. Like I think the smart home solver did a variation of this, but my own is a little different, so let's check it out. Okay, so the first thing that I'm doing is I set up a node to basically check to see if I arrived home. This is a zone node and it's basically just checking to see if I made it home. And then if I am home, it's gonna go and wait five minutes or pull for five minutes to see if I've parked the car. Um, whether or not I parked the car or if five minutes elapsed, it's gonna go to the next node where it's gonna simply check the level of the battery. Um, I wanna find out what the current charge level of the battery is. So in the next one, um, I can convert that number that string value into a number because when we pull for it and we get the battery level, it comes as a string as opposed to a number and I need to be able to do some comparisons and once we do cast it to a number, we're basically checking to see if it's less than 45 or less than or equal to 45%. If it is, then we're simply going to go and check to see if the car is charging. If it is charging, then we don't have to do anything. We can stop here. Otherwise, if it isn't charging, then we go and we start to send a notification to my phone. Um, but should I not see it, or if I miss it entirely, or if I forget, the very next thing it's going to do is it's going to check to see if the car is charging. If the car isn't charging, then it's going to go and announce on all of the devices in the house, hey, charge your car. Um, if at any point the car is charging, this loop will end because you see that from this node we are basically waiting to see if it charges. If it isn't charged then it announces and then it goes back and waits to see if it is charging and then it announces. And this is like a 15 minute loop where it just checks every 15 minutes to see if it is charged and then scream at me if it isn't. Uh, so those are some of the interesting automations I created or am planning to create. Uh, let me know which one you found very interesting. Or even better, let me know if you have any automations that you use that you find is unique. Okay, bye.